family is attending. So, nag-send siya, habang nag preach si Kuya Gomer kanina, nag-send ng picture na he's currently preaching and uh, knowing our pastor, nag-preach pa siya hanggang ngayon. Siguro, pagtas ko, nag-preach pa rin siguro siya. So, uh, pag-pray po natin, maging blessing. And uh, I don't know where he's going to be preaching uh, this afternoon. Um, but uh, we know that he's going to do a lot of uh, preaching while he's there in the Philippines. And he said that it's his desire to be able to preach and challenge the people about uh, having a testing mindset. So I think that uh, he's going to preach that a lot over there. So let's pray na maging challenge po yun sa mga makakapakinig. Meron din po siya mga bilin dito sa group chat namin. Uh, tag dito. Uh, make sure na na, na inaayos niyo yung mga gawain. Maglaro kayo every night hanggang makaalis sa ilamon. So ano po, uh, bilang assistant pastor, i-carry out ko po yung, ano, yung, po yung duty uh, na iniwan po sa akin. So pasensyahan na lang po tayo mga kapatid. At saka na po yung proof, Tuesday night, pag alis ni Lamon. Okay po, so um, ang, uh, I hope na this morning was a great blessing. Uh, ang mensahe, it was a blessing to me personally. I've uh, read uh, that book many times over and it's always a blessing kahit na ilang beses mo ulit-ulitin basahin. And uh, I always treat that uh, epistle as parang isang uh, port- family portrait. Ng, uh, and uh, it was really a uh, uh, great uh, exposition of ch- ver- uh, chapter 1 para siyang family portrait na pag tinignan mo sa isang bahay makita mo talaga na hindi mo na hindi na kailangan sabihin na magkapamilya sila kasi ma- nandun yung resemblance and when we read the book of First John we can see really na pinapakita ng Panginoon yung resemblance ng kanyang tunay na mga anak sa kanya kasi nasa atin ang Panginoon nasa atin we are born again we are new uh, we are new creatures and we should bear the resemblance to our Lord Jesus Christ kung wala man lang kahit konting pagkakamukha maliwanag yung uh, epistle na hindi ka anak yun ang sinabi so uh, kaya ang resulta lamang nung ganung uh, uh, epistle pag binasa natin kung save ka it's either you're gonna be encouraged dahil nakita mo na nandun ka sa kalobo ng Panginoon you're really saved uh, pwede rin naman na save ka pero masaktan ka kasi nakita mo na, hin- na you're failing uh, in in that uh, in those aspects. Pero pwede rin na magalit ka sa epistle, which most likely mean na hindi ka ligtas. Kasi marami po nagsasabi na napaka-judgmental naman yan. Actually, pagka pinlitch mo yon, kahit yung word for word mo lang yung, yung mga words na yon, at hindi pa nabasa ng mga kapakinig, sabihin sa'yo judgmental ka. Pero the Bible itself is very clear na kung hindi ka ganito, you're lying. Kung hindi ka ganyan, hindi ka ligtas. Ganun po, ganun po kaliwanag. So uh, it was uh, really such a blessing to me this morning. And I hope uh, maging, naging blessing din po sa inyo. And uh, looking forward to uh, uh, more preaching about that. And uh, we have already read our um, text uh, today. So hopefully we'll be able to go through this, um, the whole chapter this morning. Let us pray first. Heavenly Father, uh, we pray. Uh, for this morning, we thank you, Lord, for the challenge that we had uh, during our Sunday school. I pray, Lord, that you use that uh, to, con- uh, to continue as well to challenge us in the preaching um, uh, here in uh, Nehemiah chapter 5. I pray, Lord, that you help us see uh, that um, there, there may be conflict uh, that will arise in our midst, but uh, you, you ha- we have your word, dear Lord, that we can use to solve this and to use this conflict, dear Lord, to make us stronger uh, brethren, stronger family for you. I pray, Lord, that you bless me as I speak. May you be the one to be lifted up, dear Lord, and that may you be the one to be talking to all the hearts of the people, and that we will all be uh, humble, dear Lord, to submit to your word. And I pray that uh, uh, everyone will have um, uh, attentive ears, dear Lord, to listen to your word. For these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So as um, this will be the ninth preaching in the book of uh, Nehemiah. And as I, as I keep on uh, preaching on this, uh, I've been t- uh, tempted many times to uh, skip uh, some, no, no, not, not skip some of the parts here, but to skip some weeks and go away from it. Because I see that, I, I know that the preachers will relate to this, that whenever you preach about something, it's one thing to say it behind the pop, it's another thing when you're being tested about what you said. And, um, and it's funny because almost everything that I've been saying and reading and preaching, uh, what do you call this, was uh, tested personally, especially this week. And uh, a, lo- a lot of things uh, that, that happened, I've been trying to work on this ninth message uh, every, 
uh, every t uh, afternoon just for a while because I'm not teaching here at Florida. But I've never really been able to finish uh, or to make an outline or to really uh, drive home a message until um, last last night. I just uh, had until last night. I just had all these uh, uh, things that the Lord has uh, given me because I realized that once you preach and all these things. Uh, you're going to be tested. So that, and, and you can take it in a few different uh, ways. You can take it as, tigilan ko na, ang hirap pala, baka naman mapahiya ako sa mga pinipreach ko. Or you can, you can use that as an assurance na totoo pang sinasabi ng Panginoon. No? Once you obey it, uh, he, will, he will give you grace uh, to, to really uh, go through those things. And it's been really a uh, tough week. But uh, nevertheless, I've always been preaching about the work should not stop. And I was... Uh, Tempted last night, many times, and this morning to chat uh, preacher June and say, "Na sir, pasab mo na parang hindi ko po hindi ko po kayo magpreach uh, this morning." But uh, na and Simon nagpreach ka hapon, wala daw excuse. Eh, tapos yung pinipreach ko pa, the work must not stop. So uh, that we should uh, continue preaching. So kanina hindi po kami nakaroon ng klase sa mga ladies. I I know that they're very disappointed na walang klase. Uh, pero uh, na, napahaba naman po kasi sanay tayo kay pastor na mahaba mag-preach so try po natin na uh, mag 2 hours din ano po so uh, this will be uh, chapter 5 and we see here in the very first verse that there was a, a conflict with the people and uh, chapter 4 ended with the triumphant uh, victory over uh, things that were trying to stop them from the work and um, all of these things uh, Nehemiah, through the wisdom of God and prayer and through, uh, uh, the, through the wisdom, he was able to tell them what to do, what to think, and how to overcome all of these things. But again, once, uh, and I know I have made this point over and over again, that once you're doing something for, for the Lord, and once that it is effective and working and you keep on doing it, the devil is going to keep coming at you. And, and, and even in chapter 5, it's no different. And actually, it is worse conflict that happened here in chapter 5. And after they finish half of the wall and, and, and have uh, um, endured all of these uh, trials and temptations to stop, and Nehemiah has been encouraging them, another conflict has started. And, and we have read, read a while ago that this actually made Nehemiah angry. Okay? Um, Nehemiah has not been angry yet. Okay? He has been burdened. Uh, for the Jews, he has been uh, uh, maybe a bit puzzled by what's happening. But the conflict that happened here in chapter 5 actually made him angry. Why? Because now the conflict started within the people. Hindi na po nanggaling sa labas. It's not the enemies who are, are doing something about it. It's not that the enemies are trying to hinder the work. It is the very own people of God are having conflict with each other. And because of that, the work had to stop. The work had to cease. The work had to, uh, because of this conflict, Nehemiah had to uh, uh, stop again and then deal with it. And now, and, and I know that as a leader or, or, or some someone who is uh, uh, handling ministry, it's different when there are uh, uh, challenges coming from the outside. But it's even more challenging when challenges are coming from the inside. Pag ang problema po nang gagaling na sa loob, nang galing na po sa mismo mga tao na ating inaalagaan, mas masakit po yun sa leader. Hindi na po masakit kung hindi pwedeng magkaroon talaga ng galit. Why? Because you do all you can to protect the people, to preach the Word of God, use the Word of God to protect the people from all these things that are happening outside when they themselves are biting each other's head off. Okay? So ito po yung nangyayari ngayon. Now, it didn't take long before this kind of conflict uh, arose. And despite Nehemiah's great leadership, despite Nehemiah's uh, dependence upon God and, and, and asking God for everything that they're doing, there's still a problem. Kahit po sa New Testament, no, how, no matter how good the church is, we've, we've read all the epistles of Paul. Every time he's writing an epistle, maybe except for the book of Philippians, there's always a problem in the churches. And just because there are problems, or just because like the church at Corinth, there's a big problem, it doesn't mean that it's not the church of God. And, 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 and even though these people are God's people, God's own chosen people, they are not exempted from conflicts and problems. Kaya nga po ang simbahan ng Panginoon, hindi po tayo nakataka sa problema. It doesn't mean that if we're following God, we're doing the work of God, it doesn't mean that we're not gonna have problems. Why? Because there are enemies that are causing the problems. And sometimes the enemy will use even ourselves to cause the own problem. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, we must be careful with that. Because uh, the enemy, if he cannot defeat us using his own children, he can trick us into fighting each other. 
And this is what's happening here. And it only shows that if we have a problem, it only shows that God is not finished working with us. God is not finished finish working in us. Dahil kung hindi na tayo nakakaproblema, sabi nga na preacher natin kahapon, eh di wala lang kailangan pang gawin ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. But God is continuing to work in our lives, in our church, because we need, because He's continually purging, continually trying to improve our church, so that in the future, when He comes, He can present His bride pure to, to God. That's why, kaya nga po nagkakaroon ng problema. It's not, the, hindi po question na makakaroon ba ng problema o hindi. The real question in the church is, papaano ang gagawin natin pag nagkaroon na ng problema? Kasi we, we, we can have all these problems, deal with it properly and be strong, uh, stronger in the Lord or we can have conflicts and deal with it wrongly and fight till the death of this church. Pwede po mag tayo dito. We can take sides. We can, uh, 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 we can still we can make the conflict worse and then eventually we'll find this church being closed. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, when problems arise and, and conflicts will arise, what are we going to do? It's not our responsibility. It's our responsibility to take measures to at least avoid these problems. But when these problems will arise, God has, has given uh, members and leaders and pastors and preachers to be able to discern the conflict and to be able to resolve it in a biblical way. So now the people here are have, having conflict with each other, and very much maintindihan natin kung bakit sila nakak conflict because this is a very difficult situation that they were put in. Uh, they're working with, uh, at the wall. Kailangan nilang i-build ang wall. Kailangan nilang matapos ito. Why? They need to protect their families. They need to protect themselves. But at the same time, they have to work and feed their families. And napakahirap po ng sitwasyon nila. And sa iba po sa kanila, nakaligtaan nila ang pamilya. Kahap, uh, last, last preaching na pag-aralan po natin, the balance in the work. Na hindi po dapat tayo puro work lang sa, sa simbahan. We must realize that our uh, families are, are ministry as well. And there, there's this real danger. At totoo po ito nangyayari sa maraming lugar sa Pilipinas, sa maraming kapastoran, na masyado po tayo sila nag-focus nag, uh, sa work when they forgot their own families. And, and just like these people, dahil nakaligtaan ng pamilya, ang pamilya din ang ginamit ng, ng, ng kaaway para matigil ang gawain. Kaya nga po dapat mayroong balance. And these people have failed to find that. These people have failed to find this balance even though Nehemiah has always been preaching about this and warning them about this. Now, what, are, what made them or what brought them into this conflict? There are basically two things that happened here or two kinds of people dito sa, dito sa kanilang grupo kung bakit sila nagkaroon ng problema. Here in verse number two, it says here, For there were that said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore, we take up, up corn for them that we may eat and live. Now, the first point here that I want to make is poor decision, uh, uh, the, the reason, one reason why they got into this conflict is because they made poor decisions during financial uh, 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 problems. They made this kind of decisions. This, uh, para bang nakaroon sila ng problema sa pera at para masolve yung problema nila sa pera, gumawa pa sila ng mga bagay na lalo silang mababaon sa problema. Ganun po yung ginawa nila. Now, now all of these things are happening dahil nakaroon ng famine. Now, we see that, uh, we have read that. Nagkaroon ng famine, we don't know why there was a famine. Maybe uh, yung mga kaaway are, 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 are trying to stop the flow of, of food and everything. But we know, the Bible just told us that there was a famine. Uh, and and it, it doesn't matter why, but there was. And now because of this famine, nagbahal ang pagkain, nahirapan sila mag-supply ng pagkain sa kanilang mga families, and that they had to do something about it. And of course, we have to do, uh, and of course, especially these men who are working and having their own families, they have to provide for their families. Hindi naman pwedeng trabaho na lang sila sa wall, hindi napakainin yung kanilang mga pamilya. Now, this is a very big problem. Ito yung problema na most of the time, all, uh, tayo ay nagkakaroon ng maling desisyon sa buhay natin. Now, now just recently, nagkaroon, na, I, I don't know about, uh, I cannot speak for other uh, preachers here, but uh, sabi nga, nabanggit din ni Kuya Gomer kanina, recently, we were just, uh, we were, I don't know, for me, I can only speak for myself, I was looking at a lot of options on how to really uh, provide because uh, we thought we, uh, we thought na wala na kaming support diba? uh, there was a, a few weeks that we thought na hindi na kami maririn yun ng support but uh, uh, and then I was looking at ano kaya pwedeng gawin kaya nga naisip ko uh, talagang kalabanin ko na to si Haji kunin ko na ulit yung slot ko 
Pero hindi, mahal ko si Brother Haji, hindi ko gagawin yan. Pero I was looking at all those things and and and, um, and frankly, it is a sin to worry about that because I was I was thinking na yung mga decision na ginawa ko because I had support so that I can have more time studying the word of God. I was trying to uh, uh, turn back from those decisions. And and I realized the preaching of Pastor Jesse na just because the situation has changed, it doesn't mean na yung yung yung, yung panawagan ng Panginoon sa ay nagbago. So that's that's why we need, just need to trust the Lord and we just need to trust the Lord. and Bago umalis si pastor, sabi niya, uh, buti na lang sinabi niya, uh, narinyo kayo ng support, sabi niya. And uh, nag-email na si, uh, si Brother Neil and, and, and praise the Lord for that. And not only that, the great news is, even though medyo bumaba, pero sinetal na daw niya na hopefully it will last for seven years. So sabi ko, praise the Lord. And sabi yung from, from the first weeks na naiisip ko na wala ng support, but... Now, knowing that it might last for another seven years, that is the blessing of the Lord. And that is something that the Lord has done. And maybe during those times, nakalan wala, tinetest ng Panginoon ng iyong isip. Tinetest ng Panginoon ng iyong resolve, yung resolve mo sa kanyang pagsunod. Now, here they are having a famine. And a famine is no one's fault. Hindi po nila kasalanan na mayroong famine. Kaya hindi po nila kasalanan na mahal ang pagkain. Hindi po nila kasalanan na konti lang ang pagkain. And most of and some of us here may be in a financial situation that is not our own doing. Na wala kang trabaho natural, walang sweldo. Hindi mo kasalanan na walang sweldo. Uh, oh, na walang kanang support, hindi mo kasalanan na walang kanang support. But but the but the thing is, hindi mo kontrolado yung pwede mangyari sa iyo, but kontrolado mo yung magiging response mo dito. Kontrolado mo kung anong gagawin mo. Um, dahil ba wala ka ng pera, may dancer ka? Dahil ba wala ka ng pera, magkakanta ka sa mga nightclub? Diba? Pwede tayong makakita ng mga parang but this but um in this situation we saw that the people made the wrong decision. And 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 kadalasan po sa atin when we're faced with problems being impatient and waiting for the Lord's answer for the problem ang gagawin po natin is to take matters into our own hands and make things worse. And that is what happened with uh, King Saul. Remember in 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 8 the Bible says here, and he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Now we know the story here. King Saul uh, was there for months waiting, and, and we know he knows that there's an imminent danger, and he was very impatient for the answer of the Lord, and impatient for the, for the command of the Lord. He was anxious. And we cannot blame him for being anxious because people, they can die. They can lose the war. He can lose the kingdom. He can, he can uh, lose the, uh, the war. But, but the, the, the commandment was clear, uh, when, when, when was clear to Saul that he had to wait for Samuel. Now, katulad din po natin, like in this kind of situation, when we are backed into a corner na kailangan natin gumawa ng decision, we forget to wait on the Lord and be impatient and then make our own decisions. How do you make decisions when you're backed into a corner? When you, when you know that you have to make a decision, but you know that you have to wait on the Lord. What are you going to do? Now, now King Saul here, he didn't wait. He, ha, he, he made this decision and, and took matters into his own hands. Verse 9 said, And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered a burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an offering, an end of offering, the birth offering. Behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, and, and he, that he might salute him. Now, it's funny here because usually the last moments of waiting are often the hardest moments. Now, the reason why is that we don't know if it's the last moment or not. Kasi every, every moment passing na hindi natin nakukuha yung kasagutan ng Panginoon sa problema natin, lalo humihirap pagila ng sarili natin gumawa ng desisyon. Right? Every time, uh, wala na, Panginoon, sagad na. Panginoon, hindi, kailangan nang may gawin ngayon. Panginoon, every moment, it's getting worse. Ano po ba ang gagawin ko? Oh, wag na natin hintayan, ako ng bahala. So this is, what Saul, this is what Saul did. He decided to take matters in his own hands. And now, it's perfectly fine to do something about our problems if the uh, situation is clear na kung dapat natin gawin. But here, sa, sa sitwasyon ni Saul, there's a clear command for him not to do this. Clear command na hindi niya dapat ito gawin. Pero ginawa pa rin niya. Why? Because he was backed into a corner. He was anxious. He's feeling the pressure. And he decided to do this against the, the command and the will of the Lord. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, it's not Saul had a good intention. He only had to do something because the people are in danger. He only had to do something because they were their, li their own lives were in danger. And I believe that bilang mga mananampalataya, bilang mga taong ligtas, we don't do anything on purpose para manakit ng tao. 
We don't do anything on purpose para mag, ma, malagay ang isang tao sa alanganin. But all of the things that we do always have good intentions. But it doesn't matter what our intentions are. What's, uh, what, what matters is did we get them or did we get the result in the proper way? Hindi lang po basta maganda yung intention mo. Hindi lang basta maganda yung gusto mong gawin. Papaano mong ginawa, papaano mong nakuha. And that matters to the Lord. Okay, that matters to the Lord. If our intention is to have a big congregation, huge congregation, we can do, we can do a lot of things, we can uh, uh, do a lot of gimmicks para mapuno itong simbahan na to. But is that what the Lord really wants? Now, we all have good intentions. Katulad po ng uh, uh, the, the subject in debate today, this mandatory Bible reading, all of us want people to read the Bible. Okay? I don't know why they think that we don't want people to read the Bible. That's what we do. We preach, read the Bible, read the Bible. But what we don't, but what we're saying is that we don't use the law to force them to read the Bible. And I don't know how, how they don't get that into their heads. But, but the thing is, it's good to see the whole Philippines read the Bible, but getting it in the wrong way will not glorify the Lord at all. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, no matter how good your intentions are, gawin po natin ito ng tama. Wait on the Lord to show us the way how to do it. Now Saul forgot this. He knows, and, and, and mahirap pa kay Saul dito, alam niya, na hindi dapat gawin, ginawa niya. Okay? And what happened here? Verse 11, And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Now, when we're backed into a corner and forced to do something our own way, and then nalaman natin ito na mali, the default natin is to justify what we have done. It's just justify natin. Kasi ginawa na natin eh. Uh, and baganda naman yung intention natin. So we will just say, kaya ako lang naman ginawa para. Kaya ako lang naman ginawa dahil sa ganito. And in our own minds, we justify na may intindihan na ng Panginoon yan kasi maganda naman yung gusto kong mangyari. Oh, but it, it's not about that. We, we are not to justify our own mistakes. Naalala ko tuloy yung uh, debate namin ni Kuya Darwin. Muntik na kami mag-away talaga eh. Doon sa school. <laughs> Kasi si Milka, pinagdi-debate, may, may time na minsan nagdi-debate. Uh, which is good for our you know, public speaking. Magaling talaga yung mga ideas ng boss namin. Now, uh, the, the topic of the debate is it's okay to uh, sometimes lie and sa kanya, it's never okay to lie. Eh, hindi naman namin choice. So, so Ang dami ko sinabi, pwede ka magsingaling pag ganito, magsingaling ka pag ganyan. But, but, I, but I realized na it's never okay to lie. Kahit anong mangyari, kahit na ano pang sitwasyon, it's never okay to lie. Even if the truth will hurt someone, it's not, they, they didn't get hurt because you told the truth, they got hurt because of your own actions. Kaya nga po, hindi po datin pwede ma-justify kung anumang kagustuhan natin, kung anumang ganda ng intention natin pag ginawa natin ng mali. Just like Rahab, tama ba yung uh, sino ba nag-preach nun just, uh, just previously? Now, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean na, na, kailang, na, na porke uh, na-save niya yung, uh, yung buhay ng mga spies na to, kailangan niya magsinungaling. No, his, her lies were not justified. It's still wrong, it's still a sin in the eyes of God. Now, pwede natin magawa ang mga bagay na to by doing the right thing and not doing the wrong thing. Now, a lot of people in the Bible justify their actions. I believe that when David committed sin with Bathsheba, he justified that with his own mind. I believe that when Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ and he backslid, he justified that in his own mind. I believe that when Jonah refused to, 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 to obey the, the call of God, he justified that in his own mind. When, when the people of Israel were going against AI, it was justifiable na hindi na nila sundin yung ginawa ng Panginoon dahil maliit lang naman na country yan. And, then, uh, and when the spies that were sent to Canaan, they justified themselves na to give an evil report kasi malalaki nga naman yung tao sa Canaan. But the, 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 the Bible is clear that it's not our job to justify our own actions. If our actions are correct, we don't have to justify them at all. Hindi na natin kailangan i-justify pa. Kaya, kaya nga po, make sure that before you do something, before you make a decision, even if you're backed into a corner, even if you're anxious, even if you're feeling all the pressure, make sure that the thing that you're going to do is something that God told you to do. Amen. Dahil kung hindi lang din, mga kapatid, kailangan mo rin yan i-justify later on. And kailangan din, kailangan mo rin ma, uh, uh, ma-rebuke later on. Just like uh, what Samuel, what do you call this? What Samuel did. And verse number 13, it says, And Samuel said to Saul, 
Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which He commanded for thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But because of what you did, now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord had sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Nakita po natin dito, however good your intentions are, pag mali ang ginawa mo, meron pa rin consequences yan. Kahit na ang ganda pa ng reason mo, kahit na ang ganda pa ng gusto mo mangyari, pag nakuha mo ito sa maling paraan, hindi ka exempted sa consequences. Di ba? Nakuha mo, uh, uh, napabuti nga yung ginawa mo, but ginawa mo sa maling paraan, magkakaroon pa rin yan ng consequence sa buhay mo. Just like King Saul, the consequence sometimes, dahil sa meron tayong gusto mangyari na isang maliit na bagay, sa isang event ng buhay natin, the consequence will be for the rest of our lives. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, ganun ka-importante to make sure that what we're doing is what the Lord wants us to do. And, and may kita po natin dito, the people here have responded to this problem in a way that, have, that will dig them into a deeper hole. Wala silang pera, wala silang makain, kailangan nilang pakainin ang kanilang pamilya. Anong ganawa nila? Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Some also that, that there were there that said, we have mortgaged our lands, sinanla ang kanilang mga uh, uh, ari arian vineyards and houses that we might buy corn because of the dearth. And tama lang naman, kailangan nilang bumili ng pagkain, pero kailangan ba nilang isanla ang kanilang bahay? There were also that said, we have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards. Verse number 5, Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren and our children as their children. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought into bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them. They went as far as putting into slavery their own children. Yung mismo mga tao na gusto nilang pakainin, pinaalila nila sa ibang tao. Yung, yung, yung mismo kanila mga ari-arian na blessing sa kanila ng Panginoon, uh, 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 nila. And now, because of this decision, because of these kinds of deals that they, 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 they did, lalo po silang lumalim sa problema. Kaya nga po mga patid, especially when it comes to money problems, lalo na po sa mga tao na nagsuko ng buhay sa Panginoon to be full-time in the ministry, you will realize that there will be many times na magkukulang. Kasi hindi naman po pera ang gabayan ng Panginoon. And if the Lord has blessed you and you surrender the, to the ministry, then praise the Lord. But not everyone is being blessed financially in the ministry. And then most of the time, the reason why it's happening is God is testing your resolve. Para makita mo kung gagaano ka pat pagpapatuloy sa Panginoon kahit na wala na itong mga bagay nito. Now when the time comes na na-realize mo na kulang pala ang pera sa ministry, anong gagawin mo? Are you going to mortgage your land? Are you going to let your kids uh, be slaves to other people? Gagamitin mo ba ang sarili mo mga anak para magkaroon ka ng pera? Di ba? Ang mga gumagawa po nito ay mga it's either mga taong desperado o mga taong napakasama. Bakit po nila ibebenta ang sarili nilang mga anak para lang meron silang makain? And this is what they did. Now, when we realize that uh, uh, this happens to us and whether we admit it or not, lalo na sa ating mga preachers, our service to the Lord is more often than not affected because of finances. Palagi pong naapektuhan ang servisyon natin sa Panginoon because of the lack of finances or the abundance of finances. Kaya nga po, kailangan po tayong maging maingat. Papaano po natin na-handle ang pera? And this is something that I have I had to learn uh, uh, in a very long time. And until now, I'm still learning that. Now, mar marami kang pera, hindi porki marami kang pera, solve na ang problema mo. Diba? Hindi porki, kasi minsan pagkulang ang pera natin, isipin natin, dumami lang ang pera ko, okay na. Pag dumami ang pera mo, marilis mo, same din ang problema mo. Why? Because hindi yung pagkadami o pagkakaunti ng pera. Ang, ang pinoproblema po ay papaano mong inahandle yung pera. And I believe Pastor Jesse really explained that to us uh, a lot. Kung papaano pong ihandle ang pera. And, and I believe that, and that, that, that message stuck with me. And, and, and I tried really uh, to pray to the Lord and say that, Lord, guide niyo naman po ako papaano pong gagawin. Papaano pong i-control ang sarili and, and how to use the money that God is giving to us? It's the, the, uh, the solution here, in, and, and these people, even though they had money, they had, they had to dig themselves a very uh, uh, a deep hole na if without intervention of Nehemiah later on, talagang 
mararanasan ng kanilang mga anak, ng kanilang pamilya yung sakit ng mga ginawa nila. Now, one more thing is, lalo na sa mga padre pamilya and, 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 and parents, if we are not careful with handling our money, yung ating mga anak ang magsasuffer din yan. Why? Because they had to really, dito, literal na nag-suffer because they were sold into, sold into slavery. But, even sa panahon natin, when we dig ourselves a hole, when we're in debt, and even even the family, our families and those people near us will suffer because of that. Kaya nga po, magkaroon ka ng pamilya o magkaroon ka ng kamag-anak na napakadaming utang, ikaw din naman apektado. Hindi naman pa pwedeng sabihin mo, ay, wala akong pakilam dyan eh, hindi naman ako yan. Pwede, kailangan mo rin tulungan. And there's only so much that you can do. Kaya nga po mga patid, we have to be more careful. Why? Because it will affect people around us. Now, I praise God that even though I have many problems, uh, sometimes, my family is there helping me. And I praise the Lord for that because uh, I can spend more time uh, doing the things that I need to do for the Lord. But it's not about people helping or people uh, 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 being there to help you. It's about how you really manage the money that God is giving you. Now, because of their decisions, they had placed their fam families into bondage. And without the intervention of Nehemiah, patuloy po nilang mararanasan ito sa, 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 sa kanilang buhay. Going back to verse 5, sabi dito, Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as the children, and lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants, and some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. Sa, sa ating pong uh, simbahan, we can be into conflict because of wrong decisions that we make, because of pressure. But what's worse than people digging themselves into a hole that they cannot come out of are other brethren willing to bury them in that hole. Sabi po dito, for other men have our lands and vineyards. Hindi lang po basta sila nagkakamali ng desisyon, hindi lang sila basta nagutang ng nangutang, nagbenta ng nagbenta ng kanilang pamilya, kung hindi, ma-realize po natin yung kanilang inuutangan yung kanilang pinagbebentahan, sarili nilang mga kasama rin. And itong mga tao ito, willing na willing na ibaon sila sa utang at ilibing sila sa utang. And they were not even thinking of what they can do to help. Ha? Ang, sabi dito, ang sabi dito, sila mismo, nilalagyan pa nila ng interes yung inuutang ng kanilang mga kapatid. Ha? Tinatanggap nila yung anak nung kanilang makasamahan para maging slaves nila, para lang meron silang makain. Now imagine how evil these people are. And this is because, simply because of greed. Because they want more. They want slaves. They want, uh, gusto nilang ari-arian. Gusto rin nila ng pera. Kaya, willing na willing silang ibaon itong kanilang mga kapatiran. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, dito, sa ating, uh, dito po sa ating simbahan, hindi po yung, uh, 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 hindi po maganda yung palaging nanguutang, of course. But, bilang mga tao na pinagpala ng Panginoon, kung meron po dito, dapat po willing tayong tumulong nang walang kapalit. Kasi yun po yung love ng brethren. Saktong-sakto to kasi may utang kay Milk ang $10 eh. Diba? Willing po tayong tumulong kasi pa alam mo na nangangailangan yung tao, pinahiram mo, ininteresan mo pa, wala kang pagmamahal. Di po ba? Yun po, na, ano po sabi ng Bible dito? Kasi alam po nila ang, ang batas ng Panginoon. Exodus chapter 22 verse 25. The, the Bible says here, If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him an us uh, usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the, su uh, uh, by that the sun goeth down. For that is his covering only. It is his ra raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep. And it shall come to pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear for I am gracious. Sabi ng na, naliwanag ang utos sa kanilang Panginoon, pagka nagpautang ka sa iyong kapwa, huwag mo nang lagyan ng interest. Usually po dito, yung nilalagyan nila ng interest. Nilalagyan nila, oh, balik mo yan, may interest yan, ha, at the end of, pag hindi mo pa binalik yan, kunin ko bahay mo. Wala pong pagmamahal yun. Sabi ng Panginoon, pag sila umiyak sa akin, dahil wala silang maisuot, wala silang matulugan, ako ang magbibigay sa kanila. Why? Because the Lord has been gracious to us and we should extend the same grace to our brethren. Pero hindi rin naman tayo, dahil dito, ng utang ka na ng utang, hindi ka magbayad. Ano po? Kasi kailangan mo rin naman magbayad. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 36 and 37. The Bible says this, Here, take thou no usury of him, or increase, 
But fear thy God, that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him thy victuals for increase. Huwag kang napapang, nang, nang, nagpapautang para kumita. Huwag kang bumbay. Ano sabi ng Panginoon? Na, nang, napapang, nang, nagpapautang ka para dumami na ng pera mo. Magpautang ka kasi gusto mo silang tulungan dahil meron silang pangangailangan. Okay, here in uh, Deuteronomy 23 verse 20 to 21, the Bible says here, Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury. Kung hindi mo kapatiran, sige, kung gusto mong lagyan ng interest, gawin mo. But unto thy brother, thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thou settest thy hand to do in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. Ito man, ang gagawin ng mga nangungutang, bayaran nyo naman. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it will be sin in thee. Nakita nyo po yung balance at pagmamahal na gusto ng Panginoon sa kanyang mga tao. Meron nakakailangan dahil sa pagmamahal, pahiramin mo. At ikaw naman, pinahiram ka dahil mahal mo siya, babayaran mo siya. Kaya nga po, pagka ang pagmamahal ay namamagitan sa ating lahat, wala pong magkakaroon ng gamitan, hindi pong magkakaroon ng apakan, hindi pong magkakaroon ng lokohan. Why? Because the, mahal natin ang isa't isa. Kaya nga po, sabi, ng, sabi ni, kaya nga po, maiintindihan natin bakit nagalit si Nehemiah. Alam na nila bakit pa nila ginagawa. And dahil sa ginagawa nilang ito, kailangan matigil ng gawain natin. Kailangan matigil yung pagbibuild ng wall. And the thing is that the, the enemies outside were not able to do. These people did it by themselves. Diba? Na, 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 si Sanbala, si Tobaya, they failed in stopping the work. Pero sino nagpatigil ng gawain? Sila-sila lang din mismo. Kaya nga po, mas matindi po yung mga, gawa, yung mga uh, yung, yung, yung problema na nagaling sa loob. Napakaliwanag po ng law ng Panginoon. Okay lang na magpautang with interest sa hindi mo kapatiran. Uh, sa hindi Jews. It's not it's, it's okay din na magpautang ka sa Hudyo pero walang uh, interest at hindi ka rin dapat nag-enslave ng kapwa mo Hudyo. Yung po yung, napakaliwanag po ng uh, Bible dito now. All of this is because of greed. People who have want more. People who will have more, they will want eventually want more. Now, greed will make a person do things that he didn't think he could do in the first place. Now, we are commanded to be a blessing to those who are in need and not to be the ones to bury them in debt. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, kung meron po tayong greed at, at, at ang goal natin sa buhay ay magkaroon na magkaroon at magkaroon, gagamitin po tayo ng Diablo para sirain ang gawain. Kaya nga po, mga tao who went into the ministry or in, or, or in the church because of money, it, they, are easily, uh, they can be easily used as a tool of the devil. And I know a lot of us here came uh, uh, dito, uh, uh, initially because of our jobs. And no one's blaming you for that. You came here because you want to earn help your family. That's okay. But as, as, as we study the Word of God, as we learn the Word of God, as we get more intimate with the Lord, we realize that it's not all about money. Na habang tayo nag-aaral ng, ng salita ng Panginoon, unti-unti natin na-realize, hindi lang pala pera ang, 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 ang dahilan kung ba't dinala ko ng Panginoon dito. And, and the reason was, I want to have to be deeper in the Word of God, to love God more, and eventually dapat yung goal natin sa pera magbago. And if we still have to earn money, we still have to work, pero hindi na yan nasa top ng ating priority. Why? Kasi kung ikaw ang, ang tao na ang pera pa rin ang dahilan mo kung bakit ka nandito, kapatid, ikaw ang gagamitin ng Diablo para magka-conflict dito sa simbahan. And pwedeng gamitin mo pa ang kapwa mananampalataya upang lalo, silang, lalo ka magkaroon ng pera. Kaya pa, kapatid, huwag tayong uh, greedy. Ano ba yung greedy sa Tagalog? Sakim. Hindi naman swapang yung swapang ayaw magbigay, di ba? Sakim. Sabihin talaga, huwag tayong uh, gusto pa natin ng pera, gusto pa natin. And, and the Bible is full of warnings anong gagawin ng greed sa ating buhay. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. Sabi dito, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. I'm not saying that we should not earn money, but if money becomes loved beyond measure, it will become the root of all evil in our lives. Now, when we love material things more than the things of God, may kita po natin pa paano tayo gagamitin ng Diablo. Luke chapter 12, verse 15, it says here, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Bakit po tayo gusto natin lang magkaroon pa ng marami, palagi pa maraming pera? Why? Because we think that people look at us based on the, our bank account. So, tingin po natin that the measure of a man is measured by his bank account. 
That is worldly thinking. Ang measure po ng tao ay ang ating pagsunod sa ating Panginoon. Proverbs 13.11 says, Wealth gotten in by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. I'm not saying that it's not God's will for any of us to be rich. Some, sometimes it's God's will for you to be rich. But by getting it in an ill way, in Ill, ill-gotten way, then that is, that is where the sin lies. Ecclesiastes 5.15, it says here, As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. Kaya nga po, napaka-foolish to live because of money. Kasi hindi naman natin madadala. All of these things are material things dito lang po yan sa mundo. And we use money as a tool para po tayo makakain, makatulong. But if we make money as our life's goal, it is foolishness. Why? Because we can't bring it anyway. The things that we can bring uh, to heaven or the things that we can uh, invest in heaven are the things that we do for the Lord and for the love of the people of God. Now, moving on, balik tayo sa Nehemiah. Now, God will use people to resolve conflict. Now, as I have said, hindi po exempted ang simbahan sa conflict. And we will have conflict. All the churches in the New Testament had their own conflict. But God will use people, it may be the pastor, it may be the preachers, it may be someone sitting in the pews to resolve the conflict. Now, Nehemiah with his dependence upon God is the perfect man to resolve the issue. Kasi po, pag may conflict sa kapatiran, hindi po gagamitin ng Panginoon yung tao na makikipagkampihan lang. Gagamitin ng, ta- ng Panginoon yung tao na uh, alam niyang i-discern kung paanong isolve ang, ang, ang problema. And Nehemiah was the perfect man to do this. Why? Kasi kilala natin si Nehemiah. He doesn't do anything without praying and asking God for wisdom. Now, if, if there are conflicts in this church and God revealed it to you, pray to the Lord paano kang gagamitin ng Panginoon para ma-resolve ito. Kasi usually, yung mga tao nag aawa hindi nila ma-resolve ng, saris- ng sila-sila lang. Di ba? nagpa-utang, ng baon sa utang, pera yan eh. Usually, mag-asawa nga, pinaghihiwalay ng pera. Yung pakayang hindi mag-asawa. Now, God will use someone else to resolve this problem. Now, first what Nehemiah did was he took his emotion out of it. Verse number 6, it says here, And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Now, it is very much understandable na nagalit si Nehemiah. He didn't commit sin because he got angry. Hindi po, it's not, 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 not uh, sin, it, uh, anger in itself is not sin. The reason why you're angry is what, uh, what makes it sin. Okay, kung nag, nagalit ka because of selfish reasons, dahil ginawan ka ng mali or whatever, that is kasalanan. Pero nagalit ka because of the, uh, the, the, the work of the Lord is being affected, it, because the glory of God is at stake, then that's when you, the, the, then that's when anger is justified. Now, Nehemiah was angry. He knows all these things. Pero ano sinabi niya? Then I consulted with myself. Inisip niya muna. Hindi siya basta nagalit, sugod. Anong pinagagawa niya dyan? Hindi niya po ginawa. He consulted with himself. Okay? And, 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 and this uh, phrase in itself, this uh, uh, clause in itself says a lot. Okay, he, he first sat down, he thought of what to do, and I believe being Nehemiah, he prayed to the Lord. And when you pray to the Lord, that anger will be gone. Mawala po yan. Um, wala, ka ng, wala ka ng galit, tinanggal ng Panginoon, then you can think clearly how to resolve the problem. Anong ginawa Nehemiah? And I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, Ye exact usury every one of his brother. And I set a great assembly against them. Now, he rebuked niya sila personally and then he called other people to deal with them. Verse number 8, it says here, And I said unto them, We after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. Sabi ni Nehemiah sa kanila, Kami, binili namin sila out of the bondage ng mga unbelievers, ng mga heathen. And heathen here are talking about the non-Jews. Kinuha namin sila, binili namin sila doon. Bakit dito mismo i-enslave niyo ulit sila? Diba? Pinalaya nga sila doon. Tapos dito mismo, kung kailan pinalaya na sila, i-enslave niyo pa sila dito? Now, the Bible is very clear that even though we have been freed from the bondage of sin, that even though God bought us from that, from that market and God has saved us and, and because of His blood, pwede pa, rin natin, pwede pa rin tayong maging bondage ng kasalanan. Una, pwede sa sarili mong gawa. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 20, For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become, uh, and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the everlasting life. God has freed us from the bondage of sin. Pero po bilang mga tao na uh, if, if we're disobedient and we live, we still live in, in, in the pleasure of sin and, and the things that ginagawa sa buhay natin, we again put ourselves into that bondage of sin. Okay? I'm not saying na nawala yung kasala- ang, ang, ang kaligtasan mo. All I'm saying is, bilanggo ka na naman ang kasalanan. And, 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 and you, it's the same thing that Nehemiah is telling these people. Okay? Pinalaya namin sila doon, kayo lang din pala ang magbabandage sa kanila dito mismo. And, and you can uh, uh, enslave yourself because of your own doing. Pwede rin naman na mga tao na tuso at greedy will enslave you even in the church. That's why uh, Peter warned us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. The elders which are among you I exhort, whom also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not what by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Pagka po hindi natin ito sinunod, bilang mga preacher, bilang mga future pastors, we will enslave the people of God again. And this is happening around many churches today. Na pinalaya ng Panginoon, because of His blood, they were saved and freed from all this bondage. Pero pagdating sa simbahan with an abusive leader, nakulong na naman sila. Why? Because they are lording it over the flock. They are there because of the money. They are greedy. They want power. They want control. They want money. Kaya mismo mga tao ng Panginoon gagamitin nila to enslave them to their own desires and own demands para, lamang, para lang ma- ma-achieve nila. And then this is sad. When, when the people of God, we see the people of God who are freed by the blood of Jesus Christ are being again in bondage because of these uh, 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 abusive leaders. And if you're angry about that, it's okay. It's justified. Why? Because these are the very people of God who are being put into bondage. Now, uh, verse 9 here, going back to verse number 5, uh, uh, chapter 5 of Nehemiah. Also I said, it is not good that you do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? Simple lang sabi ni Nehemiah, hindi ba kayo, hindi nyo ba iniisip anong sasabihin ng mga unbelievers sa atin? And these people, baka itong mga to, tumatawa na lang sa kanila. Hindi na pala natin kailangan magplano-plano. Sila rin palang sisira ng sarili nilang gawain. Uh, 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 nag-isip pa tayo, nagtago-tago pa tayo sa mga uh, 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 piles of uh, stones para uh, nagplano pa tayong patayin sila, minak pa natin sila, hindi na pala natin ito kailangan gawin, sila-sila pala mismo magpapatayan. Sabi ni Ninhamay, hindi pa kayo natatakot, ano sasabihin nila? Now, we bought them out of, uh, out of slavery, tapos natawanan nila tayo, we brought them here into slavery again. Kaya ka po mga kapatid, napaka ganda pong isipin nun. Anong sasabihin ng mga unbelievers kung tayo-tayo mismo nag-aaway? Anong sasabihin ng mga tao sa labas kung tayo-tayo mismo may conflict na hindi natin maayos? Again, again, I will reiterate, hindi po tayo ligtas sa conflict. But the thing is, kung papalalain natin to and we're just gonna bite each other's heads off, tatawanan lang po tayo ng mundo. And we're not going to be effective in this place. We're not going to be effective uh, in, in winning the loss here. That's why we have to keep our testimony. Kailangan po natin ayusin ito. Now, natural lang po na mag-away ang believer sa pera, pero believer against believer, nag-away dahil sa pera, sira ang testimony mo. Imagine mo, parehas na member ng IBCSR nagdedemandahan sa pera. Ano na lang sasabihin ng mga taong involved doon na unbelievers? Ano na lang sasabihin na pera lang hindi nila masolve? Pera lang hindi nila mapatawad ang isa't isa? Why? Because there are people who make bad decisions and there are people who are greedy. At pag pinagsama mo yan, napakas, napakasama po ng, ng pwede mangyari. That's why we have to keep that. And Nehemiah is asked, na, verse number 10, I likewise and my brethren, my servants, might exact of them money and corn. I pray you, leave us off this usury. Restore, I pray you, to them even to this, even this day their lands and their vineyards and their olive yards and their houses. Also the hundred parts of the money and of the corn, the wine, the oil, and that ye exact of them. Sabi ni Nehemiah, ibalik nyo lahat ng kinuha nyo sa kanila. Kung, kung sinanla sa inyo yung lupa, ibalik nyo. Kung inutangan kayo, uh, yung, yung interest na kinuha nyo, ibalik nyo rin yan. Why? Ba, nakita ko to, why is this important? And why did I stop in this uh, verse 11? Kasi, 
Again, going back to the uh, 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 examples kanina, lahat, even these are the people of God, nagkakaproblema. Churches of God in the New Testament, nagkakaproblema. Pero they also have one thing in common. When they are corrected by the Word of God and the mind of God, nakikinig sila. Gagawin nila. Okay? And now, and, and, and Nehemiah is demanding that they restore everything. Kasi madali lang pong mag, I'm sorry. But Nehemiah didn't want them to just say they're sorry. Nehemiah wanted them to give back. Yun po yung tunay na repentance. Yun yung tunay na godly sorrow. Na kung talagang you're really sorry, you're go- if, if there's a, any way possible to undo the actions, gagawin mo. Yun yung tunay na tao nag-repent. Kung, kung, pero kung wala nang chance, isabihin hindi mo na ulit, uulitin. Yun yung tunay na repentance. Kaya nga po, mga kapatid, when, when, when the Bible is demanding fruits for repentance, it is clear na ang tunay na tao nag-repent, meron pong papakita ng repentance yan. Hindi lang basta nag I'm sorry. Kaya sabi rin, Hemaya, ibalik nyo. Kahit yung interest na kinuha nyo, bilangan nyo, ibalik nyo sa kanila. Kung talagang gagawin nyo, kung talagang nag-repent kayo, kung talagang sorry kayo. And even, even when the Apostle Paul writes to the, uh, to the, to the uh, uh, churches in, in the New Testament, when they are corrected, they will do it. Verse number 12 and 13, anong sabi nila? Then said they, we will restore them and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priest and took an oath of them that they, that they should do according to this promise. Maliwanag po mga kapatid na ang tao na tunay na anak ng Panginoon ay marunong magpakumbaba sa salita ng Panginoon. Kahit na po gaano pa ka weekend ang mga tao sa Corinth noon, when they were rebuked and when they were confronted by the Apostle Paul, nagbago sila. It's either magbabago ka o aalis ka. It's either masusunod sa Panginoon, salita ng Panginoon, or iiwanan mo ang simbahan. That is the very reason why there is church discipline. That is the very reason why uh, we are being rebuked. Why? Because para magmanifest kung tunay kang ligtas. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, kung uh, uh, tawag dito, tao ka na dinidiscipline ng Panginoon, na nire-rebuke ng mga preachers, na rebuke sa, sa preaching ng Panginoon, malalaman mo kung tunay kang ligtas sa response mo if you are going to be repentant of it and do something about it, not only say sorry. Kaya ka po, yung taong dinisiplina at umalis, hindi po ligtas yan. What, what, ano po yung binasa kanina ni Kuya, na, ni Kuya Gomer? They, they uh, uh, hindi pala nabasa, 1 John 2.19 says, they went out from us. Why? But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have committed, continued with us. But they went out. Bakit? that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Kaya nga po, napaka-importante na biblical church discipline. Napaka-importante po na pag mayroong tao na nagkakamali, i-discipline po using the Bible in the right way, hindi lang po basta-basta lang, basta makadiscipline lang, we do it in the right way. Why? To make manifest whether this person is a disobedient child of God or the child of the devil. Okay, and then, and then it will manifest itself. Now, the very uh, uh, similarity of these people and even the churches of God is they know how to repent. Refusing to submit to the Word of God doesn't only mean that you are backslidden, but means that you are not saved in the first place. Napakaliwanag po ng, 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 ng sinabi ng, ng uh, Panginoon, John chapter 10, verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. And I said unto you, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Uh, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Sabi ng Panginoon, hindi kayo nakikinig sa akin. Hindi kayo naniniwala bakit? Kasi hindi ko naman kayo anak. Kaya nga po, mga, pwede tayong, uh, uh, tag dito, pwede tayong magmatigas Pero pagka Bible na po ang ginamit sa tunay na tao na may Holy Spirit, hindi na po magmamatigas yan. Ano po bang laban natin? Kaya nga po yung tao na binasahan mo ng Biblia, maliwanag sa Biblia, tinigasan ng puso, kapatid, si Pharaoh ang gumawa nun. Hindi ligtas. Kapatid, uh, uh, and, 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 let's, let's, uh, and I believe that even Judas, he heard a lot of preachings of the Lord Jesus Christ personally, but sarado ang kanyang puso sa mga yun. Bakit? Hindi siya ligtas. The people who rejected the Word of God, the people who rejected the preaching of the Word of God are, are people who are, are the very people who are pretending to be Christians but are not. Kaya nga po, malalaman po natin if, if talaga meron tayong Holy Spirit, the way we respond to preaching. The way we respond to the Word of God. Kaya nga po, kung nagpipre- meron preaching dito at Bible naman, nagalit ka, 
check mo yung puso mo. Ba't ka magagalit? Don't let your personal grudge with the person preaching get in the way. Let the Bible deal with you. And if the Bible is dealing with you, the Bible is clear. My sheep hear my voice and they know them and they follow me. Now, Nehemiah confronted these people. The same thing as Paul does all the time. Whenever he sees mistakes, he confronts them. Kaya nga po, maganda po yung rebuke. Maganda po yung open rebuke. Hindi ibig sabihin na pa-announce mo sa church, ha? Lapitan mo it rebuke mo. Bakit? Because these people who are being rebuked, malalaman mo kung susunod yan o hindi. Kaya nga po, huwag tayong matakot na mag-rebuke. Huwag po tayong matakot na, uh, uh, na magsabi sa mga tao na nagkakamali. Now, the rest of the, the, rest of the uh, uh, chapter here, the rest of the verses here, the chapter, explains to us ba- bakit nagkaroon ng napakadaling confrontation si Nehemiah sa kanila. Bakit hindi nagkaroon ng problema o hirap? Why? Because in verse 14 to 19 describes the kind of person Nehemiah was. Imagine niyo po, yung tao na nagre-rebuke sa inyo ay mismong tao na hindi sumusunod sa kanya mga sinasabi. May hirap ang exchange. Pero yung tao na nagre-rebuke sa inyo, nakita niyo sa kanyang buhay na ginagawa din niya, madali lang yung exchange. Kaya kasi Nehemiah sabi niya, ibalik niyo. Huwag niyo silang pahirapan. Ako nga mismo, ano sabi niya verse 14, Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be governor, governor na siya, in the land of Judah, from, from the 20th year even until the th- uh, 30th year of Artaxerxes the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. Kami nga hindi namin kinukuha yung dapat sa amin na. Verse 15, But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine besides 40 shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over the people. But so did not I because of the fear of God. Ako nga hin- governor na pwede ko nang gawin sa kanila, hindi ko ginagawa yan. Yea, also I continued in the work of this wall. Neither brought we any land. And all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 of the Jews and rulers. Meron pa sang 150 na pinapakain. Beside those that came unto us from among the heathen that are about us. Now that which was prepared for me daily was an ox and six choice sheep and fowls were prepared for me and once in ten days store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all this required not I the bread of the governor because the bondage was heavy upon these people. Dahil nakikita ko ang sila nahihirapan, ayoko ngang kunin ko ano yung nararapat sa akin mismo. Think upon me, my God, for good according to all that I have done for these people. Kaya napakadali lang nilang pakinggan si Nehemiah. Anong sabi kanina? Noong narebuke sila ni Nehemiah, wala na silang nasagot. Tahimik sila. Hindi na, wala silang naibato kay Nehemiah. Wala silang nai, wala silang nai uh, rebat sa kanya. Nung sinabi ni Nehemiah, tigilan nyo yan, paalisin nyo lang sila sa bandage, ibalik nyo lahat, ano sabi? Wala silang masabi, gagawin namin. Bakit? Because it was a righteous man who were, was rebuking them. We must realize, and, 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 and it's something that especially people who standing behind the pulpit must realize, hindi lang po din basta nagpipreach tayo ng Bible. It's important. But it also has to be seen in us. Kaya nga po, sabi ko, why are these things, uh, yung, yung mga, uh, when things were happening this week, yung mga sinasabi ko dito sa likod ng pagpapit, bumabalik sa akin, oh, yun ang sinabi mo, yun ang sinabi mo, yun ang sinabi mo. Ang hindi mo gagawin, pahiya ka. Hindi mo gagawin, wala kang, wala kang reeling, ikaw mismo, wala ka talagang authority ang sabihin niyan. But if you really can obey that, then you can say, iba po yung, iba po yung magsabi ako sa inyo, na gawin nyo to, because I have experienced the consequences. Sa gawin nyo to because I've experienced the blessing of obeying this. Iba po yun. Kaya nga po bilang mga tao na gusto maging preacher, maging uh, mga ngaral ng Panginoon, let's seek to be able to preach and encourage the people dahil nagawa natin, nasunod natin, naranasan natin yung blessing. Hindi po mag-warn dahil nakita nyo yung nangyari sa akin. Although both can be effective kasi word of God pa rin. But it is more effective kung makita sa'yo yung blessing ng pagsunod sa Panginoon. Kaya ka sabi ni Nehemiah sa kanila, gawin nyo ito. Bakit ako nga mismo? Barami akong kayamanan sana. Meron pa akong pinapakain, 150. Besides pa yung mga hidden na sumahama sa atin, ha, pero lahat yan pinapakain ko out of my own pockets. At hindi ako kumukuha sa inyo, bakit? Hirap na nga kayo eh. Nakita nyo yung spirit ni Nehemiah? Kung gaano kakaiba sa spirito ng mga taong tumatayo sa likod ng pulpito ngayon? Hirap na nga kayo eh. Bigyan nyo pa ako para lalo kayong i-bless ng Panginoon. Ganun lang sinasabi nila. Ah, Mahihirap kayo, bilhin nyo akong fortune, tignan nyo kung hindi kayo bless ng Panginoon. Naghihirap kayo, bigyan nyo ako ng bahay, be-bless kayo ng Panginoon. Ang layo. Ang layo po. 
Kahit na siguro may fortuner na sa time na to hindi magpapabilis si Nehemaya. Even though it was his right. But hindi po ganito ang tunay na espiritu ng tao na ginagamit ng Panginoon. Sabi ni Paul sa kanila, karapatan kong humingi ng suporta pero hindi. Bakit? Para wala kayong maibalik sa akin. Para hindi mahinder ang mensahe ng Panginoon na pinapangaral ko. And this should be the leader that we need to have today. Ang mga tao po na tumatay sa pulpito, seeking genuinely for the good of the people of God. Hindi para sa kanila lamang. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, kung if, if someday you go home to the Philippines and meron kang makita, you, 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 you attend a church na ang, ang, li, ang leader or ang pastor ay pakabig ng pakabig, stand up, run far away from that person. Why? Magiging katulad ito ng mga tao, they will, their greed will eat them up. And no big time pastor today started that way. All of them started humbly. All of them started sacrificing. Pero po nung naranasan nila, oh, pwede pala. Oh, pwede pala. Unti nang unti. Simula sa Innova, naging Fortuner. Tapos, ano daw ngayon? May grandiya ata. Unti-unti, dadami nang dadami po yan. Bakit? Nakarana sila eh. The Bible is clear. When you taste that, you will not be satisfied. You will want more. And, 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 just bec- and, and because you're a leader, you will use the people of God to do that because of your greed. Sabi ni Hemaya, hindi ko nga kayang kainin yung bread ng governor dahil nakikita ko kayo nagihirap. That is the true spirit of a person that is led by God, placed by God to lead His people. Kaya nga po mga patid, bilang mga, and this is a challenge to me as well. If I want to be a pastor someday, I have to remove my own ambition, put it aside, and let the Lord lead me. And let the Lord do that. If it's God's will for me to have a fortuner, praise the Lord. Amen. Sarap nun, di ba? Sino pong hindi nangangarap ng fortuner dito? Pero po hindi natin kukunin yon sa pamamaraan na mali and put the interest of the people of God in front of our own interest. And sana po naging uh, challenge to sa, sa atin. If you, are, if you find yourself today in a difficult situation, especially financially, huwag po natin itong gamitin upang excuse para gumawa ng mga bagay na hindi tama, magkaroon lang tayo ng pera. Kung ikaw naman ang tao na may, pinagpala ng Panginoon at meron ka, meron ka nakikita na tao na genuinely nangangailangan, Pray to the Lord na gamitin ka para sa kanila. Maging blessing. This is how you love the brethren. It requires sacrifice. Oo, mawawalan ka, pero mapagpapala ang tao, patuloy tayo mag, 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 mag-glorify ang Panginoon sa simbahan natin. And don't use that situation to enrich yourself as well. And, 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 and as we listen to the Word of God, as we preach the Word of God, for those who are preaching the Word of God, let us realize that it will be even more effective if the vessel that is being used by God is clean, and then someone who is obeying the Lord. And then it might be com- not be completely clean. No one here is completely clean. But we can obey the Lord. We can obey what we're preaching. We can apply what we're preaching. And we can have more boldness to preach what we are preaching behind the pulpit. Let's go to God and pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you, dear Lord, for uh, this morning as uh, we have studied chapter 5. I pray, Lord, that... Uh